Hi. I am Oscar, from Obsolescence Guaranteed. This video is about my Kim Uno, a small replica of the classic Kim 1 computer. The Kim 1, of course, was probably the first mass produced microcomputer. Most technology introduced it in 1976 as a cheap demonstration board for the new 65 02 CPU. It had a huge impact on early microcomputer development. The Uno is open source hardware. The design files and software are on my website. On that site, you can also check if I still have kits available. But this is a not for profit hobby project. Building an Uno should cost no more than $10. Of course, it must be cheap because it's not exactly a powerful computer. But it may still be interesting if you want to experience working with the very earliest microcomputers. Or if you want to learn about how microprocessors really work. Although the Kim offers a reasonably comfortable programming environment, you are working straight on the bare bones of a microprocessor, with nothing in between. On my website, you will find all the technical details about the Uno. In short, it was designed to be a true Kim 1, with some additional software and features. A simple gadget like this must be cheap to justify itself. So I aimed to build it as cheaply as possible. An Arduino Pro Mini is the heart of the Kim Uno. It is supported by 24 buttons, 11 resistors and a segment LED display. All the parts are available on eBay, or sites like DX.com. If I run out of kits, you should be able to scrounge the parts together for about $5 in total. The design files for the circuit board are on my website. You can send these files to a PCB designer like Seed Studios, who will mail 5 pieces back for $26. So yes. This is definitely a cheap computer. But a truly vintage one. The Kimuno has some of the most interesting 6502 software of that early period built into its ROM. So you can experience some of the earliest software tools written by people such as Steve Wozniak, Jim Butterfield and Peter Jennings. Beautiful, minimalist software dating back to a period when microprocessors had only been in existence for two or three years. But you can also play chess on it, or use it as a programmable calculator. Software Archaeology. Let's dive into the wild 70s. Let's start with a freshly bolted Kim Uno. Here, I enter the address 0200, where you normally start a Kim 1 program. Then, I press go to run the program. Never mind what this program does, but if I go back to 0, 200 and press the plus key to step through the instruction bytes, all you see is hexadecimal machine instructions. That is cool. But not easy to understand. Fortunately, Steve Wozniak and Alan Baum came to the rescue. In September 1976, only months after the introduction of the 6502, they published a dish assembler in Dr. Dobbs' journal. Incredibly, the program is only 505 bytes long. This, to me, is the fascination of these earliest microcomputers. The programs are small enough to understand, and that makes the art of programming really visible. Enjoy it like a good glass of wine, or like art. Because art it really is. But the Kim is not all about programming. There's games too. Here, I enter C000 and press the go button. This starts microchis. As you can see, this is the dual screen version. On the Kim, you can see and enter chess moves. On the terminal, the board is printed out. My site has an explanation of how to play. But more interesting is the program itself. All it needs to play chess is 924 bytes. Yes. Bytes. Peter Jennings wrote this game in 1976. It is the very first commercial game software ever. But imagine. Having no assembler. No software tools and no access to information other than the manuals. Entering hand-assembled hex codes into the Kim 1, and creating a chess playing program in just 924 bytes. Less than 7 tweets could contain all that complex logic. It's surprisingly hard to do mathematical calculations on a CPU. A lot of the earliest programming was to deliver good floating point code. A real Kim cannot show decimal points on its display, and that was a bit of a showstopper. However, the Uno does have these decimal points on its display. So it makes sense to have a floating point library built in. Any program can use it. But alternatively, the Uno can also be used as a more or less simple calculator. With that introduction, 
The last feature I'd like to show is calculator mode. It's still under development and a bit clumsy. But let's add 2 plus 4 to show a bit of it. Because I think it makes the Uno a really interesting programmable calculator for 6502 enthusiasts. Special keystrokes let you view floating point numbers. The crucial thing is, you can use this floating point mode as special subroutines in your own KIMP programs. Now you have a calculator programmable in only a few extremely simple 6502 instructions. So it's a nice incentive to learn 6502 assembly. Calculator mode will be improved a lot. This is just alpha code. But hopefully, you get the idea.